everybody. This is Courtney from Twig and Island Photography and today I'm going to be showing you how to use your new frequency separation action. So there's a couple points to this action and I want to show you the best way to do it. So what I did was I brought in an image from Lightroom that I already ran a preset on. So if I go back to my Lightroom and zoom out here is where I started with a straight out of the camera image. I added um, the Aster preset to that. And then I just basically brought up the exposure until I liked it. And then I opened that image into Photoshop. So once you're in Photoshop, here's the best way to do this action. So the main thing that the frequency separation does is it smooths out, evens out the skin tones, and it helps you with flakes and um, just all the little putsy stuff. That doesn't mean that I'm still not going to use my clone stamp or anything like that or my heel tool, things like that. So like on the bigger little things like this, I'm probably still going to go through ahead of time and do a little bit of healing on some of it because it's more for blending and things like that, like the smaller flakes and whatnot. A couple of those bigger ones I might just take out for for the heck of it, but I'll leave a couple in too to show you basically what I mean here. <clears throat> There's one thing I might just kind of take out there too. Okay, so I'm gonna run the frequency separation action here. And the first thing it's gonna do is it's going to stop on the Glossian blur layer. And there's gonna be a little note that pops up that you can click off once you do it the first time. And it basically is gonna just say that adjust your blur, your Gaussian blur, till the image is just slightly blurry. Like I don't want it to be so blurry I can't see it. I still wanna be able to see the details at least. So I can still see her, her eyes, her nose, things like that. So right around 10 for me right here is good. And then I'm gonna hit okay. Once you hit okay, it's gonna give you a couple more instructions to read one time, and then you can go ahead and click those off so they don't show up every time either. But the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna work on the blur layer, and you're gonna use your wet brush um, also called your um, your blend brush and you can option click on it here till it's the one with the little drop tool um, that's what makes me, th me think wet for that and as far as what you want your opacity opacity to be set at here um, keep the wet like 10 percent or less um, and then the rest of it like the load the mix the flow the flow is always going to be a hundred percent the load the mix I don't change a whole lot either. I kind of keep it at that 7590. And then this is, think of it as your paint on smoothing tool, your blurring tool. So you're gonna paint on this image everywhere except for where there are details. So you're not gonna paint over eyebrows, eyelashes, um, lines of the nose, the mouth, that kind of stuff. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of paint on here fairly quickly so that you don't have to watch me forever and you can get started on editing your own fun images. Um, this is a really great action for newborns, for seniors, for bride touching up, anybody who's got some bad skin. It's a really, really great action. I'm gonna get a little bigger to paint down here to go a little faster. Get her little leg here, which is nice and flaky. Um, the nice thing about this is it keeps the texture, it doesn't just blur it, it keeps the texture, which is what you want. You don't want it to just look like a complete porcelain doll with no texture. All right, so now that we've done our blurring, let me just kind of click that on and off, you can see the difference. Then we're gonna go up to our texture layer. Now this is where you're gonna work on your flakes, your dryness, things like that. And it says texture, use clone stamp. So I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna click on my clone stamp tool. Um, and this I wanted 100%. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go next to where somewhere where I wanna kinda touch up a little bit and I'm gonna option click to select the skin next to it. And then I'll paint over the area that I wanna kind of touch up where it's a little bit dry. I didn't get really close enough there, sorry. And this I'm gonna use more blending I think later. So we'll just kinda leave that there. But you can see how it just kind of erases those flakes as I'm option clicking each time that I'm kind of painting where I want to touch them up a little bit. And it's going to be more obvious as I get down here. And I'm even going to make it a little bit bigger to show you. 
just going to kind of option click to kind of get rid of some of these little flakes everywhere. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. I won't do everything so that I don't waste everybody's time. But basically just showing you how oops. And just, just how to kind of clean up these dry spots. Now you might want to leave the dry spots. It's up to you and your editing preference. But this is just one way to get rid of them. And it works really great with the flakes. I'm kind of click it on and off so you can see here. Okay. So your blending tool then, that, that last one in the middle there, you're just going to use your regular brush for. So I go back to my brush tool here and option click it till it's on the regular one. For this one, the opacity I want probably no more than about 20%. And you're going to do the same thing where you option click next to where you want to paint on and you're going to paint over the areas you kind of want to blend. So if you've got little red patches or kind of want like the skin's just a little, not the same color, you're just going to kind of paint on like that and it blends it together, which is awesome. And you can do it as big as you want. There we go. All right. So a basic showing on how you do the frequency separation. I'll just click it on and off so that you can see it completely before, after. Look at how natural that looks. It doesn't look fake. It doesn't look like you painted on gobs of Gaussian blur. It looks really, really nice and really clean. So, and then once you're done, go ahead and flatten it and that's it. So I hope you got some good things out of this video. Go have fun. Um, we always, as always, if you wanna join our actions and presets page, if you haven't, it's called Twig and Olive Love. Um, show your befores and afters. Show us how you're using it. Show us any tips and tricks that you've thought of and we'll see you soon.